Hello, Les from Thailand here. Today's story is going to be a little bit different to probably what you've heard. We've all heard the stories what the Thai girls do to the Falang over here, ripping them off, making them build houses and then telling them to go away and ev everything like that. Robbing them, uh, cheating them, doing bad things to them. Well, this today's video is going to be about two stories that I can tell you where it, it has worked the other way around, where foreigners have been bad to, to Thai girls. Uh, and it's 100% true, the stories, because the both girls I'm going to talk about are from my wife's village up by Karat. Um, it's such a small village, it's in the middle of nowhere, it doesn't even go to 7-Eleven, that's how small the village is. So the girls come from that village. Uh, the, the first one that I'm going to talk about, she was 23 years old, very pretty young thing, a few tattoos here and there and everywhere, but she decided to go and work in the go-go bars in Pattaya. So, because she was 23 year old and very attractive, she had no problems picking up men, and um, so she'd had a, a few relationships, uh, but all short-time relationships, and and then she sort of fell for this Australian man, this Australian man paid for her to, to come out of the go-go bar and he said he was going to send her a, a monthly income so she doesn't have to work the go-go bars anymore. So she was happy with that. Um, but when she went back to the village, this Australian guy didn't trust her because again, she, she'd been with a number of different men and he thought, um, you know, he wanted proof that she was staying where she was. So he wanted photographs of the house where she was living and photographs of the family. And he used to give her a ring three or four times a week between seven and 11. And he said, I want to see photographs of your house where you are. If you don't answer the phone, I'm gonna stop sending you money every month. He, so he put all sorts of restrictions on and um, if she didn't answer the phone, he was very angry with her. He just didn't trust her. Now that's a bad relationship to be in in the first place where you can't trust your, your girlfriend. So at the end of the day, long distance relationships don't work. So anyway, this guy, uh, the Australian guy, he didn't trust her. And so he thought he'd do the dirty on her because he, he thought she was cheating, going behind his back, going with somebody else or getting money from other people. Whatever reason it, it was, I don't know his reasons. Brad just understand what the girl was saying. And he said to this girl, because she lived in a, in a wooden shack, basically is a very, very poor house in the village. He said, I'll build you a house. I'll build you a brand new house so you don't have to live like that. So therefore, if, if you live in a nice house, then you know I'm serious about being with you. So she took him at his word and he said, but before I send you any money, he said, I'm going to send you it in stages. He said, I'm not going to give you all the money at the at this first time. And he said, I want a design of what house you're going to build. So she scribbled a, a design of the house on a piece of paper, and it, a very, very basic Thai house. And it was going to cost 550,000 baht to build this, this house. It was a very modest house, very, very cheap house. And the guy said, yeah, okay then. He said, but before I send you the first instalment of 200,000 baht, I want to see your house totally knocked down. And he said, so you, so you can't live in it. Go and live with your mother or go and live with your family. But he said, I want to see your house knocked down. So then I know you're going to spend the money on building a house. So she was a little bit wary about this and thought, well, but I've got no choice. He said he's going to send me the money. So, OK, I believe him. So she knocked the house down. It was only a wooden house anyway, but knocked all the house down, took the photographs, and then she sent them the photographs, video talk with them that night, and said, there you go, it's gone. Everything's been cleared away, so I'm ready to start the build now. So he said, okay, give me two weeks, and I'll send you the first lot of money through. So two weeks went, and no money came through. So they were still speaking on the phone every day. He said, yeah, yeah, I've got to get the money transferred, got to get the money transferred over. And after two weeks, no money came. So obviously she was a little bit angry with him and saying, listen, you know, 
I've knocked my house down, I've got nowhere to live, I'm living with my family now because you said you were going to spend the money and you're going to give me some money. And in no uncertain way, the Australian man said, there you go, that's for all the cheating that you've done on me. And he said, I don't believe a word that you're saying, so tough luck, I'm not going to send you any money, goodbye, and I don't wish you a very happy life whatsoever. So as you can imagine, this girl now is distraught because of what's happened. This Australian man, who, okay, it was a bit of a stormy relationship, but he was sending her money over, and she thought, okay, maybe it can work, but it was never going to work. Got her to knock her house down and not have any money to build another one. So consequently, she ended up going back to the to the go-go bar with a with a sad story to tell. So it's not just the Thai people who, who rob Falang or cheat Falang, it's Falang can do it to the Thai people as well. And the second story that I'm going to tell you, again, another, another girl in the village where my wife was, and in my wife's villages there's about 60 houses and maybe there's a dozen of them are foreigner houses where the girls have got the foreigners to build the house, but every time I go to my wife's village, I'm the only Falang in the village. Very, very few foreigners stay where it, in the village because there's nothing there, there's no bars, there's one restaurant, it's like a barbecue restaurant, and that's it. So, unless you like solitude and, you know, the farming life and happy with your own company, not many people go and live in that area but there's houses that have been built in that area by foreigners with the Thai girlfriends, but then they don't stay there. So this other girl I'm going to talk about, um, her family ran a motorbike repair business. So they were quite well, well off in comparison to most people up there. So the, their daughter, who's 33 year old, didn't want, didn't have to work. She just worked in the garage every now and then and did the books. And so she wanted what she seen the other girls with a nice house and, and one thing and another. And she realised if she was with a, a Thai boyfriend from the village, she's never going to achieve that because it's farm work or cheap, cheap work over there. So they were never going to get the same standard of house that the other girls. But she also didn't want to go to the patio and sell her body to, to be able to do that. She thought there must be another way. So what she used to do, we used to go on the internet and do internet dating. And the story that I'm going to tell you is, where, is about a Frenchman that she met on the internet. Now she was speaking to him for six months and he was sending her messages, video talk every two or three days. She wasn't very good at English. But she met him and she thought, OK, you know, he seems a nice guy. And he said he was going to come over for three weeks and he wanted to stay with her in the village. So she said, yeah, OK, you can come and stay with me. So she rented a small house in the village so she wasn't at her mum and dad's house. And this French guy came and she sat there thinking, well, well I can't charge him any money for, for taking care of me because then I'm just... Uh, like a girl, bar girl from Patio or Bangkok. So I'm not going to ask him for any money because then he'll just think I'm a bar girl. So she really, really was against charging him money for, for anything like that. So this French guy, he landed, he came to her village and he spent two weeks with her. He never bought any food, he never gave her any money. She took care of him for the two weeks that he was there. And then he said, oh, I'm going to Patia to see my friend for a week. So she said, oh, I'll come with you. He said, no, 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 no. He said, I, I, I can't take you with me. He said, because he said, he said, I'm meeting my friend. And he said, we'll be going out drinking every night. So he said, I'll come back after that week. So what can she say? She can't turn around and say, no, you can't go. So she, okay, believes him and says, okay, then I'll see you in a week's time. So a week, he went down to Patia, and he come back up for a, he extended his holiday because he was having a good time. And he stayed another week with this girl. 
Again, he, he put his hand in his, his pocket a little bit and bought some food. Like I said, there's no restaurants in the village, so it was just a barbecue meals. And so she did all the cooking and that. And basically for three weeks out of his holiday, he spent with this girl. And he said, okay, he said, I like you that much. I really, really want to be with you all the time. He said, I'm gonna, when I go back to France, I'm gonna get a visa so you can come and live with me for six months. He said, I'll take care of you. He said, thank you very much for taking care of me. He was a Frenchman. He just said all the things that she wanted to hear, that he liked being with her and he wants to take care of her and he wants to take her back to France. And she thought, wow, wow, it, it's worked, it's worked. This, this first person I've met off the internet and it's worked, he's gonna take me back to France with him. Anyway, as you can imagine what happened, he gets back to France, no more phone calls, no more video chats. She's tried to ring his number, number unobtainable. So she got let down in a big way. She got suckered into it, a village girl, a nice girl, and she was a genuine girl, but she got took in by a Frenchman. And she still went on the internet dating, and she met Canadians and Americans, always talking to them. But then she learned a very, very, easy lesson don't trust everybody that you speak to and she ended up now marrying a thai person and she's got a couple of kids now with that thai person because her one attempt of finding a phalang or a foreigner on the internet without going down to the bars or going to the massage parlors it failed miserably so she's with a thai man with two kids now at 35 year old she is now and so the story was about it's not always the ties who rip the foreigners off sometimes it's the foreigners who rip the ties off as well so i hope this story was interesting if you like it give it a thumbs up if you don't like it give it a thumbs down please leave your comments down below subscribe if you like the channel and if there's anything that you'd like me to discuss on the channel i've been here for eight years so i know most things i don't know everything but i know a lot of things that goes on over a year in thailand Watch my other videos. So from Les, retired and living the dream in Thailand. Until the next time, bye for now.